okay. So that says changing. Um, so anyway, this is what our clients are thinking. They tend to get a little discombobulated because they, you know, they see this, this medium that's been so reliable for them and it's been the big kahuna for them for so many years. Uh, you know, TV's fragmenting, the prime time ratings are going down, prices keep going up. Uh, the DVR has everybody wondering if commercial avoidance is gonna become you know, the norm. Uh, you know, consumption across screens, how do we measure it all? And oh my God, everybody's got the story about their teenager who spends the entire day in their room with the door closed, you know, on their mobile phone and on their laptop, not watching television screens, doing other things than just hating traditional advertising in general. Um, and, uh, and then the idea of multi-screen has just become a heavier distraction uh, situation in the living room. So it's got a lot of clients worried, but the truth is I see a lot of opportunity in a world like that. Not, you know, this is what they're thinking, right? They're, they're like, oh God, how do I manage all this? Doesn't look very organized. So let's just start by putting some facts out there. Yes, it's true. For the last couple of years, television usage has started to fall off. Um, the, if, for, for, for those of you that don't know, for the last decade before these few years, television usage has actually been climbing, literally been climbing for the last 10 years. Um, while network primetime ratings have fallen, the advent of uh, HDTV, the DVR has actually made uh, TV more attractive to a lot of audiences. And so we were seeing usage climb and climb and climb for the last 10 years. For the last two or three years, however, it has started to fall off. And that's logical. There's a lot more, there's a lot more options for people, a lot more choice. Um, connected TVs have a big impact on that. And yes, there are more programs that are being watched in playback. Um, record numbers of shows reaching pretty significant audiences via DVR. But let's do a little reality check. So this is a composite of the video viewing of the various segments of, uh, of age groups. And while everybody does have that story about their, their teenager um, you know, not watching a lot of TV, this is, Nielsen, this is Nielsen observed data. And what you're looking at here is that about 15% of that 18 to 24, that millennial audience, about 15% of their video time spent is with online and mobile video. So the large majority of what they're watching is still on traditional TV, live and in playback. That's something that we try to always make sure we couch to our clients so that they understand everything's not falling apart, it's just that the world is, the, the way that people consume the video that they watch is changing. So again, this is not something I, I think is a dangerous thing. It's, it's clearly an evolution, but again, it's opportunity. What we're really seeing is, what, is, is sort of a, the behavior is that on demand is growing. And that's been happening for several years, but it's now really starting to accelerate, right? This concept of watching a television show or watching an online video piece at your choice when you want to watch it, self-initiated, and across that, you know, we, we look at on demand not as just cable video on demand, but across, you know, DVR playback, PC, mobile video, anything that is self-initiated, uh, in our view, is on demand. And we're, um, we're also seeing consumption by platform diversifying, right? This is a Hulu chart. Um, I just find it really fascinating that, you know, literally two years ago, 82% of what uh, was viewed on Hulu was on the PC. Oh, you guys moved the, now we got a problem over there. <laughs> Great. Um, I promise you that it doesn't look like this when I present it to my clients, but I'm not up on a stage like this either. Uh, and today, literally less than half of it is on the PC. 40% connected TV. Is that, raise your hand if that's surprising. Literally two people are surprised. You're all that connected, you're all that smart, okay. I found this pretty amazing. Um, just the speed with which it's evolving, I find that amazing. Now this varies by partner. This is emblematic, but uh, I was in a meeting with Google the other day. YouTube um, is about to reach the point where mobile viewing outpaces PC viewing uh, for YouTube. So they happen to be a much more mobile medium. Hulu happens to be a much more connected TV uh, partner. Now this is all fueled by growth in technology and new screens emerging that are uh, great places to watch video. Um, but at the end of the day, one more time, this is, what, this is what's really happening. 
you see over the past two years, live viewing has dropped off by about an hour. And what, what's also happened is on-demand viewing has actually filled that space. So this isn't about, in my mind, this isn't about a shrinking medium. This is about a medium that's just evolving in the way people consume it. And this is so perfectly, it, it just makes total sense. You, you see an hour drop off in live, and you see an hour increase in on-demand, and we're going to continue to see that trend. That doesn't scare me. That's what, that's, you know, if you have an audience and a glass of water, you're just pouring it into another glass. You've still got that valuable audience. And there's a lot of really wonderful things about that on-demand piece of viewing that we're going to talk about today. One of which is that when people are viewing in a self-initiated environment, when they have taken a second or an hour or two hours to watch the programming or the content that they want to watch, they're paying more attention. The advertising works harder in this environment. Why? Fewer distractions. When you're watching live TV, you're much more likely to be multitasking than when you're watching a program in DVR playback or in video on demand. You're not flipping the channel when you've sat down to watch your favorite show and on demand. Um, and, uh, and, and in some cases, the clutter's lower. Uh, it's pretty amazing, but what we're seeing is we're seeing a medium that has a little bit lower attention move into a medium that has higher attention. Less effectiveness, more effectiveness. So again, I see that as a positive. That's part of the story. We'll go into the rest of it now. So what we, that was sort of just to give you a bit of the landscape. Now we'll talk a little bit about you know, what makes sense and what, and what are the different tools we do have to empower a television schedule. In my mind, that's what this whole thing's about. And that's what videonomics is about. When we talk to clients, we basically say, you can't think television anymore. This is not something we're saying for the first time this year. We've been saying it for, for years. Television prices do keep going up. It's not just going up because. It's going up because advertisers keep pouring more money into the medium. But there are some key things about traditional television that not everybody has been thinking about. It's, 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 they're obvious, but people haven't been thinking about it. And these alternative sources of video that have been growing in scale, whether it's on demand, or whether it's outside the home, like cinema <clears throat> or place-based video, these places help offset some of those inadequacies that TV has always had. And then the, a lot of what this conference is going to be about is the rise of data and technology and partners that are out there that allow us to utilize even the television medium in ways that have never been used before to enhance, to empower what we're doing on television in total. So, this is an interesting chart. I, it's, the data is not new, but the heaviest viewing 40% of the country uh, delivers three quarters of the viewing. Now that's you know, not super surprising. The thing that really bugs me is that the light viewing segment, again, almost half the country delivers about 11% of the viewing on television. So when you, you're a TV advertiser who buys 100 rating points in a week, you're basically hitting, you know, you're underserving that light TV viewer in a huge way. And light TV viewers are really valuable consumers. They're people who have jobs. They're people who, you know, go out and shop. They have cars. They buy things. The folks who are watching that much television, they don't have a lot to do. That's why I'm using it as emblematic, but it can be, it can be uh, assumed for on-demand on viewing pretty much across the board. There's your TV. On the right side, that's how balanced the Hulu audience is from a heavy to light. And I have no idea why I have that ranked in opposite order, but the colors are right. Um, but that's a way for us to offset. So now that, that's a medium that was this big before. Now it's this big. <laughs> Andrew Snyder, where are you? <laughs> there you go. It's, it's growing. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not at the scale we'd like it to be, but it's significant enough um, that, that it's a way for us to offset that heavy TV user uh, issue with television. Now, online video, on-demand video is one place we can do that. But really, by definition, as I was talking about before, the best place to reach light TV viewers is when they walk out the door, not in the living room. You get them in you know, a health club, 
You get them in a taxi on the way to work. You get them in a cinema on Friday or Saturday night. Airports, business travelers. Uh, Place-based video is a wonderful, massive medium that offers great opportunities to reach a consumer with video that didn't exist, Barry, how many years ago? Five years ago, six years ago? It's there now, and it's growing in scale, and it's a huge opportunity to reach light TV viewers. Cinema, oh, there we go, thank you. Cinema, when we're thinking about primetime advertising, when our clients are looking to be in that high quality environment, lean back experience, super high engagement, the people love the programs they're watching, they pay a lot of attention to the ads. It sounds like cinema, that's prime time, it sounds like cinema too, right? On Friday and Saturday nights, there are more people watching movies than there are watching prime time television on any given network. It's an amazing high reach medium with a super high quality uh, programming environment, all original, and people aren't going anywhere. That's a wonderful thing that cinema offers. It's not just for younger viewers. It's, you, know, you can reach moms, getting a little me time on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, it's an amazing spot, and, and, and the, 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 the research proves it out. The attention levels to, to this uh, medium are much, much higher than live TV. Again, why? Because there's, there's very little ad clutter, it's not a lot. People are in a captive environment. It's a dark you know, room with a giant screen. Of course the ads are going to work better. And today, you know, one of the major players in the space has made the strategic decision to start selling it at the same time, price as prime time. So why the hell wouldn't you look at that when you know that television's ratings are horrible on Friday and Saturday night, the audiences just aren't there because people have left their homes and the TV isn't all that attractive to them, you have a medium that delivers its highest ratings on Friday and Saturday night in a super high quality environment. Oh, and it's not, uh, also it doesn't go unnoticed that in the summer when TV's ratings are lowest, cinema does best. Place-based video, again, just want to get a little bit more into the value of that medium. It, it, it's a light TV me medium because as soon as somebody walks out the door, they basically raise their hand and said, I'm a light TV viewer. Uh, super high proximity to retail. Um, you know, if you're, if you're um, buying advertising at a gas station pump, it, what a great time to advertise a, a, a beverage or a snack. Um, you know, you can, you can reach a, a pure audience of business travelers with airline. There's so many examples of why you can contextually connect uh, a location with a brand message. And, ob and obviously that's one of those mediums where you can combine mobile and video and create a wonderful exchange of information, um, letting people know that you have a retail location right around the corner. And it's scalable, it's big. 70% of people have seen place-based video in the past month. It, you know, most of these locations are, the video screens have been put there because people don't have anything else to do for a couple of minutes. You know, they might check their phone or they might do this, that's it, that's all they got you know, pumping gas or waiting in line at the supermarket, sitting there for a half hour on a treadmill. This is a great place to advertise to people, and it's called dwell time, and it results in much higher attention to the ads and much greater effectiveness. So again, we have all of these different channels rising and popping up that are totally complementary to what you can do with live TV, and the ads work better. Seems like a big duh. Um, and then we get into this space, the emergence of, of audience buying in TV and video. Programmatic, it's not just programmatic. What we're seeing and what we, plan, what we believe we're gonna see for the next many, many years is, you know, the left side of the screen is what everybody um, in the traditional media world is very familiar with. And that is about identifying environments where there's a high propensity to reach your customer. Those environments are places that the customer is passionate about, um, they have a con very connected relationship maybe with that media partner or that program or that publisher. Um, and, uh, you know, we have been selecting media environments for our entire careers. We're very good at it. And the truth is that the data today for us to find those environments is so much better than it was, you know, again, five years ago. We're not really, you know, none of us on the buying side are, are evaluating media publishers on adults 18 to 49. I mean, we may be transacting on that, but we're not evaluating. We're looking at customer targets. Um, 
But what's really started to emerge, but I'm sorry, one other piece of this is, when you're doing business in this environment-focused area, yeah, it's great. We can pick the programs that make the most sense. We, uh, we build out really deep relationships, strategic relationships with those publishers, creating custom content, extending that opportunity through social amplification, et cetera, um, distribution opportunities. It's a way to own that content across all screens, and we're doing that, we're doing that today. But, and that is a wonderful way to grab uh, the audience's attention, to create brand love, and to create en high engagement. But in order to access that inventory, there is a huge amount of media that is purchased on sort of a run of schedule packaging basis. I would argue that some of the traditional media buys that are done out there have either a set of partners that are there simply for efficiency, or that half of a package with any given premium media partner is, again, run of schedule. Those pieces of the media schedules that we've been buying for years, they don't work as hard as we would like them to in targeting customers and in, in, in really driving high attention to the ads. They're just there to create the scale that we need to get access to the big program relationship we want to build. So yesterday, all we could do was spend more money against that very same group of customers. Today, there is a wealth Today, the right-hand side of the, of the equation is here now. There is a wealth of data available to us, of technology, and of partners, either internal at the agency groups or external through third parties, that allow you to analyze this piece of what you're doing. And you can identify, of your core customer target, what are you, who are you missing? You know, what guys aren't watching ESPN? What light TV viewers aren't being reached? And you can create through data and technology by leveraging everything that's available to, to us today. You can create an entirely complementary schedule. You can take a piece of that money and put it over on the right-hand side, or your, yeah, your right-hand side <laughs> of the bifurcation puzzle, and you can, you can spend that money much smarter and create an incremental reach or frequency against a very important segment of your target, and that can sit right on top of the buy that you've already made. So you've got your base, environment-based schedule. Analyze it, figure out what you're missing, and fill in those cracks with an audience-focused approach. That, to me, is a wonderful opportunity in video and something that we've been talking to clients about for a long time. And a lot of our, our clients are now uh, working with our advanced TV unit and our trading desk to, you know, to deliver those custom audiences of customers, not age, sex, demographics. It's great development in the, in the industry. So this sort of sums up the holistic approach that we recommend to clients. And again, it's, the entire thing is meant to empower a base TV schedule. You've got, you know, environment-based approach should now be, you know, include on-demand across all different screens. You gotta look at web endemic original programmers like Yahoo and YouTube, et cetera. You got your cinema and your place-based, and don't forget multicultural, because if you're marketing, especially if you're marketing young people in this country and you're not including multicultural, you're missing a huge swath of very, very valuable consumers. That's a wonderfully comprehensive plan right there. Then you look at that schedule and figure out what you're missing and how you can get to it through an audience-focused approach, leveraging data, technology, et cetera, targeting your customers. And then for those customized sponsorship uh, uh, programs that you're building where you're, you're creating custom content with partners and you're um, you know, drawing more attention to the content and to the ads, uh, you've got opportunities like, you know, Twitter and Facebook and Shazam that allow you to amplify that through social or to build out a customized schedule just targeting viewers that have already been exposed to your ads with companies like Collective. I know they're here too. Uh, so there are really amazing things that you can do to amplify a TV schedule as well. That's it. So we think actually in the long run, this holistic approach is going to be good for marketers. This is a bit of an eye chart, but the, the, the basic premise is, you know, with more, uh, with more players in the marketplace, with more considerations and more choice, you have a more competitive landscape, you have more premium impressions at efficient prices, you've got greater use of data and technology that are delivering incremental reach, delivering more attention to every ad because you're increasing relevance across the entire thing. And in the long term, we think that this is going to be more, more quality more players and platforms, and ultimately should 
in the long run should keep the price down for advertisers because it's a more competitive marketplace. So that's it. That's the toolbox. That's the story we're going to be telling to our advertisers. That's a lot of what you're going to be hearing about today and tomorrow at this conference. Um, and I think this should be the norm, not the exception. It's kind of crazy that today it's still the exception. Now, there are a lot of barriers to making it the norm, which I think is what the entire premise of Videonomics is, right? It's for this community. Everyone is involved in some way in showing marketers the value of video and what video can do across all screens and across all opportunities to move their brands, to move their business. We need to encourage that. That's what this group is here to do, so I invite you to have a lot of dialogue and uh, participate in this conference. We're hoping to have a lot of fun, and we will definitely have a lot more fun than the people in Los Angeles. And who's with me? <laughs>